My family loves going to theme parks. We love going together. But like any other family, every now and then there's things that can get on each other's nerves. And there are some things I do that drive my kids nuts. We've been going to theme parks as a family for years. And like any other family, dad sometimes embarrasses the kids and does some things that gets on their nerves. And our family is no exception. When we go to theme parks, there are definitely things that I do that drives my family and especially my kids a little bit crazy. The good old, dad, why do you have to do that? Kind of thing. Here's seven of possibly my worst examples of what I do that drives them crazy in the parks. First... I overplan. If I'm going to be doing a big trip like to Disney World or Disneyland or something that's going to be a few days, I tend to really get into the planning aspect of it and driving them a bit crazy with what do you want to do? I want to make sure we can do that. How's the schedule going to work? Where are we going to eat? Where are we going to stay? What days are we going to do this? What days are we going to do that? What time frame are we looking at? And it can definitely get on their nerves a little bit. They're like, Dad, slow down. Take it easy. We can figure some of it out when we get there. I'm probably the worst with this when it comes to Disney. The dining reservations and some of the special shows and other things that you have to reserve ahead of time. And I definitely do go a little overboard in planning it. Now my excuse is so that once we get there I can relax because I've got everything set and I don't have to worry about if we're going to get a meal or something like that. But it definitely drives them a little bit bonkers the way Dad is constantly talking about this stuff for weeks at a time before we go when they're just like dad we'll get there when we get there and we can figure it out they definitely like to take things as it goes sometimes and, and i do too but i'm weird in that i need to plan for a day to take it as it goes it's easier when you live close to a park like silver dollar city you can definitely take it as it comes in but yeah for the big trips i definitely drive them a bit nuts that way number two Power walk charging adrenaline surge. This is probably the number one complaint they actually give in that when I get to an amusement park or a theme park, there is just this adrenaline surge that comes over me and it lasts all day long. We hit the gates and I'm charging. Now, I don't run. My age and stuff i just don't do that anymore but i definitely hit a fast paced power walk to the point where they've gotten in the habit of somebody reaches up as soon as we get in the gates and grabs my belt loop on my pants and pulls and that's how they hold me back and stay together because otherwise i'm gone i blame my father for this one when we were young and we did our trips to disneyland in 1980 and 85 and 88 and when we would go to Marriott's Great America we would hit a park and we charge we would do a whole park every single ride in a day okay now you're kind of going well yes for some parks that's not a big deal we did Disneyland every single ride in one day charging half running sometimes just plain out running that was kind of the pace that we got used to as kids when we went to a big park was we just flat out charged and went from one to one to one never stopped except for meals we didn't take it easy <laughs> and i still do that today it's actually almost a joke that i kind of laugh that the old man can wear the kids out at the parks because i will go all day long open to close i'm ready to go and they're just kind of going dad slow down this is happens more at parks i don't get to very often Silver Dollar City, I am much more likely to, you know, three, four, five o'clock. Okay, yeah, it's been a good day. Let's go, and I take it easier. But something like Disney, man, I'm off, and it drives them nuts. There have been more than a couple times when they have been standing in one place, and I'm like way ahead of them, and they're just shaking their head. Number three, having to wait for me while I take pictures. Yes, in the middle of all the charging ahead, I then do something else that drives them crazy. I'll stop. 
and I would just randomly stop right where I am, and I will take pictures, or I will take video, and I'll not move. And they're, now they're kind of going, all right, we've been charging ahead, now we're paused. Part of this is because of the channel, because I want to make sure I get good pictures and video. And I then tell them, you just keep right on going, you know I'm going to catch up to you and probably pass you up. But it kind of drives them, here we are, charge, 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 charge. <laughs> Stop. Why do you do this? Uh, yeah. These sudden stops and pauses for me to take pictures and video and make notes and stuff, definitely annoying in the middle of a charge. Number four, posing for pictures. This is one that probably drives my daughter crazier than anybody else in the family. Although my wife a little bit. When we pose for pictures, I try to, you know, yes, we do the standard stuff. And then I usually don't ask them to do something. I end up telling them, okay, everybody do this. We got to. And for my daughter, my daughter, she loves art and stuff. But out among people, she's not very dramatic and doesn't like to draw attention. And so then when I tell her to pose a certain way, it's awkward. And so you get some very awkward expressions where she's kind of like, why am I doing this? This is weird. I don't want to do that. And so then she gets this strange smile like, all right, here we go again. This is dad's fault. I don't know why I'm doing this. I tell them sometimes to do things that they're just not in the mood for. But I love to get my pictures if there's an opportunity to do it. And again, it could be in the mist. Charge, 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 charge. Stop. Let's take a picture. Why? We were charging. Now I got to totally change my mindset to pose for this picture that I'm not really in the mood for posing for. And yeah. Yeah, my daughter doesn't tend to hide it as well as the others do. Joseph, my son, he's got no problem putting on weird faces and expressions and poses and stuff. He's great at it. But Amber... It's harder for her. Yeah, she definitely doesn't like it when dad does that sometimes. <laughs> Number five, the way I respond to music in shows. This is something that I've driven my kids nuts with for years. Before a lot of the shows, you'll hear music playing and upbeat music a lot of times, especially if it's a kid-friendly show, or you'll hear it during shows, and they encourage the audience to you know get involved, move to the music, and enjoy it. And if you've seen my videos, you know I love music. My wife teases me that I'm Baloo, because if there's a beat, man, I'm just going. And... Mm, yeah. Well, man. What a beat. We'll have times before shows or during it where I'm dancing in my seat and just loving the music. And then I turn to my kids and start grabbing their hands going, come on, do it. And they're like, dad, leave me alone. I want to sit. Especially when I make them sit close to the front because I don't like sitting near the front. And dad's doing all this stuff and they're just like, oh my goodness, dad, can't you sit still and be quiet? I like music. If there's a spot that, where they want the audience to get up and dance with the music, I will probably get up and dance. While my kids want to crawl under the bench. <laughs> my wife, neither one of my kids are like that. They just look at me like I'm an idiot. Eh, that's probably because I'm acting like one. But, dude, it's music. You gotta do it. Now, while you create a disturbance, I'll rescue Mowgli. Got that? I'm gone, man. Solid gone. Number six. Drawing attention to them at shows. Yes, also show related. They love shows. Sometimes they just hate going with me because I will do something that will draw attention to them. They ask for volunteers from the audience. And if it's a kid volunteer, I'm grabbing their hands and waving it. And they don't want to get up on stage. They want nothing to do with that. And here I am trying to make them get up there. Or I'll volunteer. The funny thing is, I've almost never been picked. I don't know why. But they're just like, stop letting people know we're here. Let us just sit and enjoy. If it's a show where everybody sings along. I'm definitely singing along. Or other times where I will shout out in the middle of a show if I think it's appropriate, which it isn't always. A good example of this is if you have ever seen the Frozen sing-along show. And there is the spot where they're singing Olaf's song and they do the little bit where it goes, Winter's a good time to stay in color, but put me in summer and I'll be a and my kids just go, oh my goodness, dad, why? And I'm laughing hysterically because I think it's funny. People around me are doing one of two things. They're either laughing or they're looking like, what a loser creep. <laughs> I have fun and sometimes I overstep the bounds to have fun. Sorry, kids. Yeah, they they hate when dad does that. Shows are awesome with dad sometimes, and other times they're horrible. And Aaron and Laurel will admit to that one, too. <laughs> Number seven. 
meeting people in the parks and trying to act witty. Okay, this may be after a show and talking to the actors and performers. It may be just running into people in the parks. It may be talking to the park employees. One of the things that I hide inside a little bit is inside I feel very socially awkward. And so I cover it up kind of over embellishing and trying to be funny and use puns and crack jokes and especially for employees and people who've just done a show and stuff and so i try to make these connections to make it more fun and most of the time it just makes it really awkward for my kids the people i'm talking to don't always know what i'm talking about a good example we saw buckets and boards in branson a few years back and one of the guys actually used to be a train robber out at silver dollar city so we were all waiting after the show to meet people and get our picture and as we stood up, I kind of made some comment about it's a blast from the past and said a couple lines from the train robbery. And he's just kind of looking at me like, what? Huh? Oh! In the meantime, my kids are wanting to just crawl away and hide because I'm trying to make a connection and make it fun. And really, I'm just being dumb. And yeah, it's awkward for them at the time. And then afterwards, I'm probably sitting there going, boy, that was dumb why did i do that Ooh, how ridiculous and yet it's an effort to try to make things more fun and make a connection and oh they they hate that it's that kind of a thing um, if you were at the disney meet and greet at disney springs a couple years back when i was sitting there talking and my daughter came walking up with a friend of hers everybody kind of turned around and looked at amber and somebody said you don't know us but we know you and it was this reaction that my daughter had where she felt everybody looking and went, no, they're all my dad. It freaked her out a little bit. Very well-intentioned, well-meaning. She got that awkward feeling like, I can't do this. I, I can't have my dad all over the place. So if you saw that, that was what was happening. <laughs> Sometimes when you're awkward and then you try to cover it up with a connection, then it just becomes even more awkward for everybody around it. I'm great at that. So there's seven ways that I thoroughly embarrass my kids at theme parks. Do you do the same? Have your parents done the same to you? Have you seen other people do things like that? I would love to hear your stories. Please don't forget to share them in the comments below. Thank you so much for hitting that like button, subscribing, hit the bell notification, check the description. I get a lot of people that ask me questions about where my fan pages are or questions about me. Check the description first. There's a ton of answers and information down there. There's also information about YouTube memberships and Patreon support. If you want to know about financially supporting me and getting some perks and behind the scenes information and early previews, be sure to check those links. They're the ones that help provide for the trips that I get to go on, for my equipment and so much more. And I get to spend some extra time with them as well. Thank you so much for watching though and God bless. This is seven things I do in parks that drive my kids nuts. <laughs> number two, this number one, two, three. You know, I love going to shows. We love seeing all kinds of. Okay, number six, also shows.